Good morning everybody. Today we're going to go up to the woods to get the trees that I actually cut a few days ago for our Christmas trees. We ended up cutting full-size trees and so I'm going to go get those out today. I'm digging my second logging car out of the shed that I put away for the winter because my good logging cart that I normally use is up and on a lot on another log job that I've been working on at times but it's so wet up there I decided I better hold off on that for a while where these trees are it's it's all sandy and it's good and dry so it shouldn't be a problem so I'm just getting the neck yoke and ear hitched up onto the cart and then we'll hitch up the horses So this is a cart I don't usually use and uh, with every cart the pole or the tongue can be different lengths so you're hitched on to different spots on the evener. So I was going to hitch on to the fourth length from the back where I thought I was and I realized this is too tight so now I've got to disconnect the other three tugs and go to the fifth length from the back and that seemed to work fine although it could be a little bit tighter still. A lot of harnesses have their heel chains hitched right to the tugs. I prefer my heel chains hitched to the evener so that's why I do it like this. There's just a hook on the tug. This allows the <laughs> harness to be a little bit lighter. So Brenda's gonna go with me today. She's going to drive the skid steer up. I don't have any equipment up on this landing to load my logs on and so she's going to take that up while I hitch onto the wagon and take the wagon up so she'll follow me. I only have three trees to get out today. It's probably not very efficient to do it like this to go up and get just those three trees but it's in a spot where I'm not generally logging and I'm just afraid the way my mind works I'll forget about them or put them on the back burner and next spring I won't get to it and then they'll just sit there for too long so I better just get her done since I have the time. So in here we have a bunch of Douglas fir trees. They were planted back in the 50s by a previous owner. Douglas fir is not at all a species you would expect to find in northern New York, but we do have them. They, they've done okay. They haven't grown as good as they could have. A chipper crew went in here about 10 years ago and thinned this out a lot. It used to be very thick in here, and of course that's one reason why it hasn't grown that well. So hopefully now it will. Um, they are doing okay. I've cut very few of them. I did come out here with the girls to get a Christmas tree the other day and I did make a video on that if you'd like to see that. And we actually cut some of the, a couple of the bigger trees down that had nice tops for a Christmas tree and took them home. And so now I just want to get the tree out so it doesn't get lost in the busyness of life and, and uh, we'll make some nice lumber out of it, I'm sure. I'll show you at the end of the video what the lumber looks like. Here I'll show you a good example of a rolling hitch where I slide the chain down, hook down low so when I pull it it rolls it out of there. There's always branches on the bottom side and by doing this it rolls those branches up so that I can cut them and make it clean. As I'm turning around I realize that my car is going to hit the tree behind me and the tongue won't have enough room to get around the tree in front of me, so I have to pull ahead and 
set myself over so that I can get out of here the way I want to. So because of the rolling hitch, when I hitch onto the log and pull it away, my chain is really loose. So now I have to back up to get a close hitch so that the log will have more lift when I'm pulling it. Some people have shown a concern that I don't have chainsaw chaps on right at the moment. and. Uh, it's true, they're great to wear, and I wear them sometimes, but these logging pants also um, come with a um, liner that are chainsaw resistant, so sometimes I use them, sometimes I use chaps. Most of my horses have a strong desire to pull and I've noticed over the years that if I shut my saw off at the end of the log, the chances of them wanting to go are greater. So a lot of times I'll just leave my saw running until I get back closer to them to make sure they don't move. This might surprise a lot of people, me being able to run the saw right next to Bill, but I've had a lot of horses in the woods and that's one of the quickest things to get a horse used to, I feel, is the chainsaw that very few of them cause any trouble after just a little bit of time getting used to it. Here I'm backing into my last tree that I'm going to get out today. 
It's a little spruce tree that I thought might have made a decent Christmas tree, but we cut it down and there really wasn't a good Christmas tree at all there. So we just left it and I'm taking it out. I'll make some nice two by fours out of it or two by sixes, I'm sure. Here we are coming home with that load. We had some pretty good snow squalls on the way home. Got a little bit of a dusting of snow just in that short period of time. to um, get it sawed up so you can see what it looks like. But I wanted to show you one thing first. Um, we know that these trees were planted back in the early 50s, I'm not exactly sure when, but really close to around the early 50s, which would make it um, 50, uh, 2000, 70 years old. I mean, these are, they should have done a lot better. But I want to count the growth rings and see if it is accurately those 50 years. The butt logs are generally the places, best place to count because they're where, that's where the tree is the largest and so the growth ring should be the farthest apart. But as you can see, this is kind of a little rough cut, so I'm gonna take my chainsaw and just cut, cut it down at least halfway so that we can get a clearer view of these rings. Okay, I have a, just a slab cut here. So we can see where our best place to count rings would be. This end doesn't look quite so good. Right here it does. Let me just get a, some more light on the subject though. Okay, I'm going to attempt to count them. So we just need to go down to the center. So it's just this stretch here. So it's going to be a little difficult, but let me just see if I can do it. One, two, three, four, five, six,
I counted just 49 there, but it's a little bit difficult to count them. In places, it's it's really close, right through there, right through here. But, uh, and it's not really the best log to be doing it with. So I don't really know what to tell you. We do know it was planted at least in the 50s. So that would be 70 years. And I'm not counting 70 rings on there, but maybe there is. Some trees will show their rings a lot better than others. I think the bark on this Douglas fir, the, the more mature ones are quite unique. Of course, we don't have anything native around here like this. So, well, let's get to sawing and see what it turns into lumber. Because I use my logging car, all of my logs will have dirt on one side, but the other three sides are fairly clear, clean. And so when I get a log on the mill, I attempt to put the log so that the dirt is up top so I can get rid of the bulk of the dirt right to start with. That's why I kind of rolled this log backwards with the clamp to get the dirty side where I wanted it to be.
Well, the wood isn't quite as dark as I expected it to be, but it's still nice looking wood. Well, there, there's the lumber right there. It's, uh, it's definitely Douglas fir and it's definitely northern New York, which is very rare, I think, to be able to find trees and southern lumber of this species. But I do want to show you something that I've seen other people do on videos with wood. It kind of helped bring out the, the features in the wood. I don't know if that helps it or not, but there's a little bit of make it look clearer for you. So anyways, hope you enjoyed the video.